Next generation regenerative medicine refers to stem cells. By evolving regenerative medicine, we can greatly enhance the therapeutic effect. This will be a new form of regenerative medicine. I would like to explain next generation regenerative medicine this time. Before that, let's start with a discussion about what regenerative medicine actually is. First, explain the topic of stem cells, often arising in discussions about regenerative medicine inside our bodies, like skin and blood. Cells with a short lifespan are constantly. There is a replacement happening, even if the cells die when their lifespan is over. It will fill that in with new cells to regenerate and replenish these lost cells. Cells that possess the ability are referred to as liver cells. And currently, it can be conducted under the laws in Japan. There are two types of regenerative medicine. The first one is the use of stem cells that are present in one's own body. The other method involves using one's own blood. Well, the first one. I will explain about regenerative medicine using stem cells. It exists throughout my body, including in the brain. Organs such as the heart and liver muscles. It's found everywhere, like in fat. Generally, it's something that exists within your own body. We will use stem cells from fat. It can be easily extracted and it is found within the fat. Stem cells are attracting a lot of attention because they can transform into various types of tissues. That is taken from my body and processed in a cell processing room. Extracting stem cells from fat. Cultivate the stem cells until they reach a certain number and then the treatment involves giving an intravenous drip injecting locally back into the body. For example, in cases of osteoarthritis where the cartilage is worn away. When administered, cartilage is regenerated. Intravenous treatment for the after effects of a stroke. By administering these stem cells, paralysis, numbness, and yeast disorders. This enables fundamental treatments that can restore health. Through this regenerative medicine using stem cells, the knees and hip joints, osteoarthritis, knee meniscus injuries, shoulder rotator cuff injuries, and hernias in the neck and lower back, spinal canal stenosis, spinal cord injury, and other conditions such as stroke. For diseases such as diabetes, hepatitis, fatty liver, and cirrhosis, the ability to provide fundamental treatment is a significant feature. In conventional insurance, medical care, ultimately, treatment will rely on surgery and medication as the primary methods. In other words, the cartilage in the joints is worn down. When the pain becomes severe, surgery for joint surgery, or in the case of shoulder rotator cuff injuries, addressing the torn rotator cuff. If it worsens, it may require surgery for an artificial joint or be threaded, or the after effects of strokes and hernias, as well as for numbness and pain. If you take medication, or if your muscle strength has decreased, but while continuing rehabilitation, there was no other way but to wait for the natural recovery of the nerves. In that sense, it is possible to aim for fundamental treatment. Regenerative medicine using stem cells is recognized. It is becoming a highly anticipated treatment. And the second type of regenerative medicine using blood. This is called PRP, platelet-rich plasma, when you have your blood drawn. Blood is drawn with a syringe and processed with a centrifuge. It is a concentrated collection of components found in blood such as platelets and growth factors. This PRP is used in orthopedics and in the fields of beauty, dentistry, OBGYN. It is mainly used in orthopedics, particularly for joints and tendonitis. For beauty, it is injected into the face. In dentistry, the base of implants, it is used to increase the jawbone and in obstetrics and gynecology, it is also used for treating infertility. However, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, does not contain stem cells. So for example, were the cartilage worn away from osteoarthritis of the knee, even with admin, not possible to increase cartilage. PRP is an insurance-covered treatment, similar to hyaluronic acid injections. This serves as a symptomatic treatment to relieve pain. First type of regenerative medicine using stem cells, they are put in. Stem cells gather at the site of injury and repair the damaged area. It will be a treatment that becomes tissue, promoting regeneration. Stem cells can regenerate nerves and blood vessels for their respective regenerations. As a result, 
it can freely change to regenerate cartilage where cartilage is needed. This is the current state of regenerative medicine using stem cells being conducted in the country. However, the stem cells administered to the body are directed to the injured areas, gather together and focus on the injured tissue. It's very efficient when it can regenerate, isn't it? This is made possible by advanced regenerative medicine. These stem cells gather at the injured area, the process becoming damaged tissue called differentiation. Differentiation refers to stem cells. It refers to the ability to transform into various tissues like blood, blood vessels, cartilage, and bone. Regenerative medicine. So that many damaged tissues can be regenerated, it is possible to induce differentiation. Next generation regenerative medicine refers to, can be induced to differentiate into specific tissues using stem cells. By inducing differentiation, it leads to the desired tissue. This marks a new era of regenerative medicine enhancing regenerative capabilities. Furthermore, in the process of differentiation induction, no chemical substances or genetic manipulation are used at all. We are utilizing the power of the cells that we inherently possess. And in terms of safety, there are no particular issues and you can receive treatment with peace of mind. Eventually, regenerative medicine using stem cells will use differentiation. It was said that it would evolve to become possible, but at the Repair Cell Clinic, for the first time in December 2023 in the country. Treatment using next generation regenerative medicine by Health Ministry. It has been approved. Now specifically, I would like to explain the treatment of joints using next generation regenerative medicine. First, in the case of osteoarthritis of the knee or osteoarthritis of hip. I would like to explain how joint pain occurs. First, I will explain the structure of the joints. There is cartilage, and beneath that cartilage, there is a bone called subchondral bone. There are no nerves present, so pain is not felt. However, nerves do exist in the subchondral bone. I feel pain from the cartilage wearing down, affecting what is underneath that cartilage. Pain only appears when the subchondral bone is damaged. In other words, a major cause of joint pain is this damage to the subchondral bone is very deeply involved, isn't it? Furthermore, the subchondral bone serves as a foundation for the formation of cartilage. It plays an important role because there is subchondral bone. On top of that, cartilage is regenerated. If the foundation known as subchondral bone is damaged or deficient, during stem cell treatment. No matter how many stem cells are administered, it becomes difficult to regenerate cartilage as desired. To make it a bit clearer, the underlying subchondral bone must be regenerated. Whether cartilage can regenerate is examined through soil and harvest. Let's compare it to the relationship with crop yields. The soil of the field. Subchondral bone refers to the crop that can be harvested as cartilage, provided that the area of the soil in the field is large. The larger the size, the more crops you can harvest, right? And without soil, crops cannot grow. It does not grow. Cartilage regeneration in the joints. It is the soil. If the subchondral bone is not regenerated, then above it. Cartilage, which is a type of tissue, does not regenerate. In other words, how much area of subchondral bone? Whether to regenerate or not, it will be regenerated. The amount of cartilage is determined by conventional stem cells. In the treatment, a portion of the stem cells administered in the joint is used. It was not used for regeneration of subchondral bone cartilage. Therefore, next generation differentiation in joint regenerative medicine, the step is to establish a foundation of cartilage. We induce the differentiation of stem cells for subchondral bone regeneration. As a result, there is a lot of subchondral bone. By being regenerated, traditional Regan medicine, it has become possible to regenerate more cartilage. And through next generation differentiation, in joint regenerative medicine, efficacy for meniscus injuries, bone necrosis, and ligament injuries, it shows effects. Next generation Regan med compared to conventional Regan med, it can suppress inflammation with a strength of about 20 to 30 times. Strong anti-inflammatory. This promotes the regeneration of the meniscus through stem cells. What this means is that, originally, stem cells have. There is also an effect of suppressing inflammation. A portion of the administered stem cells is used to suppress inflammation. New Regan medicine offers advantages over conventional stem cells, having strong anti-inflammatory effects that suppresses inflammation. The amount of stem cells used is very minimal. As a result, 
the majority of the administered stem cells were found in the meniscus and regeneration of bone necrosis and ligament injuries. It has become possible to use it more intensively. The benefits are also enhanced. In addition, in most cases of meniscus injury, cartilage injuries are also commonly observed. If this cartilage damage is left untreated, gradually expanding into joint deformity, it will progress. In traditional arthroscopic surgery, removal of meniscus is performed. Treatment for symptom therapy, such as home visits, will be performed, but at the same time, it is damaged. There was no method to repair cartilage, was there. However, in stem cell therapy, the meniscus and cartilage are. Achievable fundamental treatment regenerates together. I talked about next generation regenerative medicine. In this video, we explore why repair cell clinic is chosen. Regarding this, I will include specific methods for culturing stem cells. I am explaining it in an easy to understand manner. Please take a look. Getting this information, you gain a deeper understanding of regenerative medicine. As regenerative medicine continues to develop more and more in the future, at Repair Cell Clinic, we are always incorporating new technologies, incorporated faster than anywhere else. And further, in pursuit of high therapeutic effects to be able to treat what could not be cured, I would like to continue to focus on treatment moving forward. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe and hit the like button. When you subscribe to the channel, a bell icon will appear if you set it to notifications. You will be notified when the video is uploaded. Thank you very much.